All right, hey, my name is Brian, um, and I am a commercial photographer. Um, I photograph a lot of, uh, for the last 10 or 11 years, uh, professionally, uh, hotels and apartment complexes and resorts and things of that nature and commercial buildings is basically what I specialize in. So um, I've been fighting to do, uh, fighting the drone thing uh, for, for a long, long time. I started flying drones pretty much uh, uh, very, very early, um, a lot longer than most people have even even been flying. I don't know, maybe 2011, 2012, when uh, the DJI Phantom 1 series uh, quadcopter came out, I bought it immediately. It had been out a month, and I bought that. And I'll show you a picture here, up above or right here. And then uh, I flew that for about a year. And then it had no, no gimbals were available uh, in short, so it just didn't have good uh, uh, video quality. Um, it had a solid mount for a GoPro. At the time, um, you know, in 2011, 12, there were no commercially available gimbals. People were building some that looked like, you know, um, out of a construction kit, the old metal, the metal, you know, that they would put together to make the little rolling, archaic looking vehicles, you know, with the bolts and the holes in the metal. Can't remember what that's called, but it was just, it was ridiculous. But the video footage was very, very bad with a lot of uh, jello and vibration. Um, I didn't have a GoPro. I mounted a uh, Sony cam on there and custom configured mine and built my own uh, mount for that. And bought some makeshift uh, vibration absorption plates and, uh, and I'll show you a picture of that here close up. And then I got rid of that one and then I bought the Phantom 2 and it had a two-way uh, gimbal on it and it had, I bought it from a guy here at Hobbytown that was really into this stuff. Uh, I'd gotten out of it and then got back into it and and then, so I bought his at a discount. He was getting rid of it or buying something new. And so I flew that about a year. And then I got freaked out by all these drone laws and all these people bashing drones. And then I got harassed a bunch of times just out flying, minding my own business. And so I was like, man, I'm getting out of this drone crap. Um, it's just way too much burden and too much, uh, too much problems. And so I knew I needed to get it. My, my company that I shoot for, uh, I contract for last year during the pandemic right before was like, man, you've got to get in uh, and get your drone license. We're almost requiring everyone to do this and you got to get your drone so we can start doing these combo packages for the hotels. Everyone's going this way. Um, so, and then the, then the, uh, pandemic, the stupid virus bullshit happened. Um, and I decided, you know, I wasn't going to be spending, you know, $1,500, $2,000 on a drone and then another $200 on drone license and all this BS. So I didn't get it. So finally, it's now 2021 uh, June and I mean, I was like, I got to get it. Uh, everyone's requiring it um, and my work has pretty much dropped off uh, and all these things and m no one's paying me. And so now I figured I got to get my drone license. So. Uh, getting to the point, I, I took my drone test today and man, I just wanted to share with everybody, it had nothing of, of, of the studying that I did for the past uh, three uh, weeks. And then, you know, like uh, seven or eight months ago, I watched Tony Northrop's video and that helped me break me into, you know, watching all these other videos. And let me grab my list real quick. Um, I can't tell you uh, all the videos, all the video uh, people I watched, the real videos. The drone coach, I watched his 12 videos two times and then some of the lessons three times. And then I watched the Pilot Institute, Tony Northrup, Drone Tribe, and one other guy that had 10 lessons that was really, really good or so I thought. I studied them. I wrote down eight pages of notes front and back studied them. I knew everything. I knew all the numbers, all the oh point. Uh, point zero four. I knew 500. I knew, uh, you know, 2000 between guide wires, 500 below the clouds. I knew, I knew everything. I had it all memorized. Uh, true uh, altitude, but I had all those. I had all the, uh, I had all the longitude and latitude all done out, the METAR, TAFs. I had it all, all, all in my head fresh almost none of it was on the exam and this is june, uh, june 2021 at and i took mine at the psa 
center um, and it was 107 for people that, that want to know so I saved a little bit of money but none of that stuff was on there there were maybe like five questions from the uh, the full three weeks that I studied and everything was worded differently so I memorized all the verbiage and so I could easily identify it it was all changed up and, and changed to throw people off um, I would say probably 80% of the exam, I hadn't seen the stuff that was on there. And I learned, I learned everything straight from the drone coach, drone coach off the 2021 January, February, March 2021 documentation from the FAA. Almost none of that stuff was on there. So I don't have anything good to report because I, can, I cannot even start to repeat uh, what the questions ans ask. Because, I mean, I was stressed. Not stressed, but... I was like, holy cow, there's, this is nothing. Nothing sounded right. Even the A, B, C, the three questions, none of them sound right. One was not better than the other. One of them was a little worse off, and then the two were like, this, neither of those. And so I just had to, I just had to guess. I, I mean, I, I, I thought I guessed on 50%, and then I might have educated guessed on 70%, and then on... I mean, maybe 20%, I totally just random, just, just picked. Um, but, and that's what sucks is I can't add anything here. I mean, it was, they were so random, so offbeat. I can't remember them for the life of me. I was in, the, in there trying to get the test and the countdown was counting down. And, and it was just, it was kind of a little bit stressful. Uh, in the situation of going in there, they treat it like a bank vault, you know, with security cameras everywhere and locked doors and, and uh, you know different chambers you walk into it was just kind of a you know not the best situation as I could say it's a you know it's easy once you get in there and you walk out and you score good on it um, you can just kind of reflect back on it the lady was very nice and very helpful here and was polite and kind of funny um, but uh, yeah I mean it was it was tough it was tough and on the end of the into the exam it asked you questions you know about rating all this stuff and i was like man this none of this stuff was on y'all tr they tried desperately to trip me up but i will say when i walked out i thought i'd failed i thought maybe i was in the 60s high 68 69 i really thought i failed and i studied pretty hard and, and i got a master's degree and a bachelor's degree i'm not saying i'm the smartest uh person and but I'm older, I'm 50, so, you know, when I was 20, I, I made a lot less good decisions, and now I'm a little, little more calculated, though, even though I can read a question and still get tripped up and not read it fully, but I tried to really concentrate and pay attention to the questions because I knew they're trying to screw with you, and they did. Like, man, I'm like, maybe 40% of it was just like, F you, uh, screw you, and good luck, but I will say... And it's unfortunate that I can't repeat anything good. Um, I will say that I got an 88 and I was, I was amazed. I got an 88 on it and I passed. Uh, one thing, things that I can say to you is just sit there, read the three questions over and over. And just even though three of them don't sound right, just pick the one that, that maybe works the best. Um, I mean, it was very, very odd. Um, and everything that I learned and the, and the wording of how I, I learned it, they, they read it backwards. They just, they just deliberately tried to just, anyone that they knew that would go to YouTube and study things, they were like, aha, we're going to screw with you and make it more difficult for you. Um, and it was just, it was just kind of a, it just kind of sucked. Uh, but um, if I didn't pass, I would have been really, really bummed, um, but I passed so I could look back and go, man, and really excited and say it was a really good experience. It is helpful knowledge, and I understand why they're making it so tough because there's just so many idiots out there that are flying, and it's just so dangerous to have a million idiots out there flying that don't know anything and don't care and basically want to go against the rules, you know, like the personalities that they tell you about. If you've studied the personalities, I mean, it's just a lot of people are ignorant and idiotic and they're just uh, trying to break the rules, like flying up past the clouds and um, just doing really stupid things. And so they're really trying to make it hard on people uh, to make sure they are really trying to, to fly and fly right. And that weeds out a lot of these a-holes and these, these jackasses that are flying all these different drones, you know. And so 
Um, it's good that I got it. Now I will be able to get serious about my drone photography. Um, and I'll show some pictures of a lot of, uh, I mean, I've photographed thousands and thousands of photos. Of Of, uh, really nice hotels, some not so nice hotels, IHG, La Quinta, um, uh, Hilton, I mean, you name it, uh, I photographed all the different brands, you know, about a hundred times each. So I have a lot of experience. I just never wanted to get my drone license. So now I got to get my, I had to get my drone license to move on to my next step. So I just wanted to bring this information to you. Sorry I couldn't uh, divide or point out certain questions and repeat them to you. Um, I will show my exam and it has the codes of the questions that I missed. And I, I mean, I watched so many videos and I did watch one person that took his exam. He was really smart and he got a 93 and he missed like five questions and he looked at the codes and my, my paper shows the codes. It's not this piece of paper, it shows the codes of the questions that I missed. I missed maybe six or seven and you might be able to relate to, if you look those up, I'll be able to see what those dealt with. And man, I mean, I couldn't go back and tell you which ones I guessed right and which ones I guessed wrong. So um, just hang in there is my best advice. Uh, open up your book, study hard because it did help me better to go in there than just going in there blind because um, I, I you know, knew more. But also to let me show you, I had no, I had two TAF and METAR questions. I had no longitude, latitude. I had, I, I, it, most of my studying, none of it was on there. I had none of those questions. Um, it was all just random weird questions um, that I had never really thought about or that was never presented to me. So that's all I have. I mean, I'm getting hot in here and sweaty, so just don't mind that. But I hope, hope this can encourage somebody. Just go in and do your best. Do your studying as you can because I'm not a super gifted smart test taker. Um, I went in and just read them over. I went in confident, even though when I went in and I was read the first, you know, 50 questions, I was like, oh sh crap, this, I am not confident at all. Just go in and try to make your best choice from the extensive studying that you're doing. And then just look for the best answer out of the three, even though the third answer may not seem correct. You, there's, there's just one that's a little bit more correct than the others. Um, and then there's two that are close, I mean, and, and some of them there's just go either way. And I maybe just guessed, um, I'll tell you what, I prayed about it before to the Lord, and I believe the Lord, I know the Lord helps guide me and lead me if I'm doing His will, and I'm believing in His Son and His death, burial, and resurrection. So I prayed for the last week or the last month to help just guide me in my studies and help me do a good job and to help me do better, you know, than an 88. <laughs> And look, I got an 88, and I know his hand was in there and helping me because, man, I, I knew I had gotten a 60 or a 65 or a 69 and failed. I knew it. I knew it, but it, I got an 88. So anyways, I, again, I hope this helps, and sorry, again, I couldn't help anyone in great detail. But, uh, yep, take my test for what it is, and I hope I can help you out in, in some way and give you a little bit more uh, a little bit more go knowledge going into it to maybe prepare. And again, this was taken in June uh, 17th of 2021, okay? I wish everyone luck uh, taking it, and it's good, it's, it's good for a reason to take it and, and know this stuff, even though I will never need 80% of it or 75% of it uh, to fly my drone. Uh, but that's, that's the FAA trying to uh, weed out the people. Uh, and trying to keep people honest about flying in our skies and uh, making it more safe. All right, bye-bye. Thanks for tuning in. Hope it helps.